In this video we are going to find out what a Hamming encoder is and how to implement a digital circuit for a Hamming 7.4 or a Hamming 8.4 encoder using Verilog. The circuit is synthesizable for FPGA and ASIC. The video also contains a self-checking test bench and the simulation results using ModelSim. This tutorial uses the minimum amount of theory, so I attached extra resources about the Hamming codes in the description of this video. Hamming codes are linear error correcting codes. They can detect 1-bit errors and 2-bit errors. The detection is done in the decoder. These codes can also correct 1-bit errors. 2-bit errors produce an incorrect output. Hamming codes are based on parity bits. A parity bit is the modulo 2 sum of 3 bits, which is an XOR operation. A Hamming 7.4 encoder creates 7 output bits from 4 input bits. The 3 parity bits can point which of the 7 bits are altered. This circuit is popular with error correction code memory, which is also known as ECC RAM. A Hamming 8.4 encoder creates 8 output bits from 4 input bits. It's an Hamming 7.4 code word plus an extra parity bit. It allows to distinguish between 1 bit and 2 bit errors. It's also known as a SecDead RAM, which comes from single error correction and double error detection RAM. Let's analyze how 4 bits of data can be converted into a 7-bit Hamming code. This table shows us how the parity bits are calculated and how they are arranged in the final code. The difference between the diagram and the table is that all the data bits index are number 30 instead of 41. P1 is the modulo 2 sum of D0, D1 and D3. P2 is the modulo 2 sum between D3, D2 and D0. P3 is the modulo 2 sum between D3, D2 and D1. The parity bits are usually placed in positions that are powers of 2, which in our case are 1, 2 and 4. You can read more about this in the resources below the video. Let's now look at an encoding example. I data has the value 1 represented on 4 bits, which is 0, 0, 0, 1. The Hamming codework contains the value of the input bits on the green digits positions and the value of the parity bits on the red bits positions. The final code contains 3 bits of 1. 2 are from the parity bits and 1 from the input data. Here is the complete set of Hamming 7.4 code words. There are 16 valid code words out of 128 possible combinations. The number of different bits between two valid code words is at least 3. This is also called a Hamming distance. Data stored in this manner is immune to 1-bit errors and can report 2-bit errors. These kinds of circuits are used in industrial computing, aerospace, critical databases, financial computing, and data servers. And now it's action time! Let's implement a Hamming 7.4 encoder for FPGA and ASIC using Verilog. The circuit has 4 input bits number from 3 to 0 and 7 output bits number from 7 to 0. We use red for the input bits and blue for the parity bits. Each parity bit is calculated using a 3-bit XOR gate according to our previously presented tables and Venn diagrams. Let's now analyze the Verilog code for this combinational circuit. At line 3 we have a 4-bit output and next we declare a 7-bit output for the Hamming 7.4 encoder and an extra parity bit for the Hamming 8.4 encoder. At line 8 we declare 3 internal reg variables for the parity bits. The variables are named according to the power of 2 position that they occupy. 2 at the power of 0 equals 1, thus we call the parity bit P1. 
I decided to use a single always at star procedure to model all three XOR gates. This makes the code more compact. At lines 11 to 13, we model all three parity bits according to the circuit schematic. The parity bits can also be modeled using continuous assignments, but then you have to declare P1, P2 and P4 using the wire type. At line 19, we assemble the circuit output by concatenating the input bits with the parity bits at their corresponding positions. At line 22, we create the parity bit used by the Hamming 84 by using the XOR reduction operator on the 7 bit Hamming code. In the left, we can see the synthesis result for this Verilog module on an Intel Cyclone 5 FPGA. Let's now implement a self checking test bench for our Hamming encoder. At line 2, we declare a time scale of 1 nanosecond with a precision of 1 picosecond. At line 6, we declare the test bench variables that are going to be connected with our DUT, which is the Hamming encoder. We use reg for inputs and wire for the outputs. At line 11, we declare the test bench variables that are going to be used by the self checking procedure. At line 14, we instantiate the DUT and connect it with our test bench variables. The procedure from line 20 contains our test scenario. We first display test start and we set the value of I data to zero. At line 23, we wait one nanosecond before we proceed to the next step. Although this is a combinational circuit and the outputs should update instantly, we need to create a delay to be able to see the output on the waveform. The for loop from line 25 will sweep all the I data values from 1 to 15, wait 1 nanosecond and evaluate if the output of the encoder is correct using the compare data task. Line 33 is used to print out the test statistics and stop the simulation. Here we have the compare data task that has two inputs. One for the I data, which is the input of the Hamming circuit, and the other for the value of the calculated Hamming code, which is connected to the output of the Hamming encoder. At line 41, we declare a local variable that will create the expected data based on the input of the encoder. The codes are taken from the tables that were earlier presented and have 16 codes out of 128 possible values. I added an underscore to make visible the limit between data bits and the parity bits. At line 64 we evaluate if the output of the encoder, which is an input for this task, equals the expected value computed above. We increment the test counter each time the task is called and one of the success error counters if the data comparison passes or fails. This kind of task can be tailored to validate any kind of combinational circuit and a self-checking test bench. These are the results of our self-checking test bench. You can see in the wave and in the console how we sweep the input data from 0 to 15 and what is the result of each individual test. In the end, we report 15 past tests. Take your time and analyze the inputs and the outputs of this Hamming encoder. Congratulations! You did a design and verification of a Hamming 7.4 circuit using Verilog and ModelSAM. If you like this tutorial and you are interested in a practical and easy path to learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my Udemy course called Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.